Hey guys, um, so once again, I feel like this is every video I start with this. Sorry it's been so long. Um, it has been insanely hectic getting everything ready for the new uh, assembly line. I was hoping to kind of document the process, um, but we had to get actually our first production run done. It is definitely far from finished, so hopefully I'll be able to document from here on out. Uh, so with that being said, here it is. So this is actually where it starts. Uh, let me show that. So right here is when you walk in to the main room. It's an absolute mess. Um, haven't had time to organize everything. So this is kind of the shipping and storage room. There's a big uh, five horsepower compressor. Um, the noise you hear is an exhaust fan and just installed that second AC in the main room, but I'll explain that in a second. So now walking into here is where the actual assembly is. So a quick overview. Um, if you know a lot about uh, the SMT line process and how boards are assembled, this will probably be kind of simplistic, but I just want to give kind of an overview of how it works for people who might not be that familiar of it. So basically, the first thing that happens is you load a board. Boards go in to that conveyor. They go over this stencil, which has a stencil squeegee on both sides and there is solder paste either uh, manually sitting on the screen that you put down which lasts for like 50 or so prints or you can have an automatic stencil uh, paste uh, solder paste dispenser and once it goes through that you can set how many passes or what it does um, it comes out of here into this conveyor and then it goes into my favorite machine by far and I think everybody's favorite machine who's into this or has an assembly line. This is a pick and place machine and basically it has eight heads with a vision system and the board, let me move this head back. So basically the board will be centered right here and the pick and place machine will grab parts from these reels of uh, components and it'll place them on the board. And this thing is insanely fast. Um, depending on the components, it can go up to like 11 to I think 15,000 components an hour. It's insane. And then after the pick and place, it goes to this conveyor. And then this conveyor, which this is one of the bigger freestanding machines here, other than obviously the main SMT equipment. And all it does is spin the board 90 degrees because I don't have room here to have a straight assembly line and then it goes into the reflow oven and you grab the boards here and then they go onto the tables where they can be tested, sorted, and then packaged. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of the process. Um, most of the machines are early to mid 2000s and one of the most difficult parts of starting an SMT line is getting support for any machines, even if it's new equipment, it can be thousands upon thousands of dollars just to have it serviced. So I was beyond fortunate that there's a company um, nearby here, actually only like an hour or two away. Um, PFI, they're in Orlando, Florida. I'll put a link in the description. They are the only reason that this was possible. They basically will buy used uh, SMT equipment 
they fully service and refurbish them and then we'll sell them to either big companies or smaller companies like mine and not only are they basically net like new equipment but they put a warranty on it and they fully service all of it um and they offer like i think we had four or five days of training all included um really like the best uh, experience with a company I've ever had. Not to sound like a complete uh, shill for them, but it truly is incredible when you see a company that cares as much as they really do. Um, so now some specifics, I guess, with the equipment. So the screen printer is a DEC 265, kind of the most standard um, and one of the most common printing uh, brands, I think it is. The pick and place is an assembly on Opal. Uh, assembly on was owned by Philips and was basically a subsidiary of Yamaha. So you hear assembly on referred to as Philips a lot of the times and the feeders also go with both of them. The oven is a Heller, which again, Heller is the biggest brand of reflow ovens. And one interesting thing with this assembly line, which is a bit different than most, is typically the exhaust from the reflow oven will get ducted out and outside of the building. But since this room is so small, like it's only like 600 square feet, if we would have done that, it would make a negative pressure in this room and it would have tons of dirt, humidity, and heat coming from outside. So we have a filtration system, which filters all of the fumes and keeps it inside, which is why we not only need that uh, ductless AC, we also just installed that wall unit. So a 600 square foot building has four tons of cooling power in here, which is pretty insane. Um, so going forward, the next big things that are on the agenda is the floors are bare concrete, which are awful. Um, we tried our best to kind of get it nicely finished and sanded, but without polishing it, there was really no way to do it. So we're gonna put down a vinyl, uh, this vinyl tile flooring, which, looks really good, it's super soft on your feet and it's waterproof and easy to clean. So that'll be going in hopefully in the next couple weeks. And then we're going to have tables extending all the way here with no more plastic because plastic is obviously terrible for ESD. And after the tables are set up, we'll have more storage, more test equipment, um, some computers uh, set up in here. And then the other room in the front for the shipping, that obviously needs to be all taken care of and organized. But other than that, that is pretty much uh, the assembly line. And again, sorry it's been so long. I really do want to start documenting this a little better. It has just been beyond hectic going from just design, never having seen a pick and place in person to having an entire assembly line within the span of a month or two. So thanks for bearing with me and I will see you in the next video.